Are you looking to stop printing toys and trinkets and move into the industrial engineering grade materials? In 3D printing, the ability is there. You can create nearly anything you imagine. Now, the consumer world has had the spotlight for the last few years, enabling people to print in basic materials like PLA and ABS, generally resulting in toys and trinkets. In the industrial and scientific world, the spotlight has turned to metals and high-performance polymers. Today, we're going over the difference between the two and how to get started with functional 3D printing. There are five major differences between consumer and industrial markets. Number one is the filaments and the polymers. Uh, number two would be the printer's capabilities, such as heated chambers, servos, robust CNC-built frames. Number three is part production and the, the capability of what types of parts you can actually produce. Number four is tuning. PLA is generally just push and go, whereas high-performance polymers are much more difficult. And number five is the mindset required for design, production, tuning, and the rest of the process in manufacturing. Filaments are the biggest difference between the functional versus the hobbyist industries. Hobbyists generally use PLA, ABS, PTG, TPU, things like that, whereas functional 3D printing focuses on engineering thermoplastics like nylon, polycarbonate, and high temperature chemically resistant polymers like PEAK and Ultim, or PEI. Hobbyist materials are much more forgiving of mistakes. You can spend more time printing and have a higher success rate with easy to print materials like PLA. Now, functional 3D printing starts at the expense. One kilogram spools of filament can cost upwards of $600, a weekend vacation for many people. They're also far more prone to warping, they need a lot more tuning, and they're much less forgiving when you fail. But they're also far stronger, they're more resistant to heat, chemicals, radiation, and more. This requires additional equipment such as heated chambers and filament dryers. When it comes to the printers, between hobbyist and industrial, you know, you can get a hobbyist 3D printer for less than $200. However, you'll spend a lot of time fixing problems, tuning, and chasing technical issues like unlevel beds straight from the factory, accuracy issues, not being square, uh, and lower power levels. So if you're trying to print CF nylon, it might not be able to handle it. Now you can spend time upgrading these machines and you can turn them into extremely robust production machines, but that'll take a lot of time, knowledge, and a good chunk of cash. High quality basic printers run $1,000 to $5,000. Printers like the Prusa and the Ultimaker or the Lulzbot. These are well tuned for basic materials and have a simpler user experience than the $200 printers. Now, high performance printers run for anywhere from $7,000 to $150,000 or more, uh, depending on the solution you're actually looking for. These often involve heated chambers, hot ends exceeding 500 degrees Celsius, uh, highly accurate motion systems, and other things like that. Now, you don't actually need to spend $5,000 to have a printer capable of printing HPPs like Peak, uh, but you'll have a much better time out of the box, and you'll probably save money in the long run just based on how much time you'll spend building that machine and making it work. This is mainly due to the environmental controls. Uh, it's much harder than it looks to get a chamber to 90 Celsius constantly. Now, for small parts on a lot of these other printers, you would do okay. Uh, anything larger than a few inches, and you need a serious solution. People often also ask about dual extrusion. Now, this is an awesome technology, but it does add to the learning curve and the amount of things which can go wrong during a print. If you can, stick to one nozzle, but if you want to, then make sure you get a system which is well vetted and dialed in. For high temperature materials, most parts can be printed with minimal or no support. But if you are doing extremely complex geometries, it is definitely something to consider. The next thing is part production. Hobbyist parts are generally made from PLA or other low temperature thermoplastics, uh, which can have its advantages. You know, it's super, super easy to print. It sticks to a cold bed and it can be really, really strong in the right geometry. However, if you keep a PLA part in the sun, it'll droop and melt. ABS is another common material, often used in car bumpers, but it's very toxic to print because of the fumes released when you melt it. And it deals with a lot of warping, so if you want to do bigger parts, you're going to have to have a heated chamber just to keep the whole part dimensionally stable and accurate. Generally, hobby printers are reserved for hobby parts. Uh, items around the house, toys, props, etc whereas functional high-performance printing enables and use industrial-grade parts. Do you need a small filter that can resist sulfuric acid at 200 Celsius? We've got your back. 
Need a structural part to go down an oil well and test pressures? We got that. How about uh, sterilizable medical device parts? You can do that too. There's a lot of new options that you can do with these materials that you couldn't even do before. Next, we come to tuning, the ugly cousin of 3D printing. It's not 3D printing, but it's required for 3D printing to work. Uh, this is the most difficult part of the process, knowing which settings to change. The cheaper printer you buy, the better operator you need to be. All machines suffer from clogs, jams, errors, but some less than others. If you spend a few hundred thousand dollars on a Stratasys, then you get software that optimizes the process, and the results tend to be easier. Uh, however, that comes with the price tag. If you opt for an open system, like the Cincinnati, uh, then you'll need some time to learn slicing options and material behaviors. On hobby printers like the Prusa, often you can just use the automatic settings, slice, load, and print. However, this becomes much more difficult with advanced materials. Tuning is really a creative process. Uh, turning a 3D model into a code that the printer uses to print and every micrometer is set in a path and you have full control over exactly what happens. In the hobbyist world, you can often just print over and over. But in the high temp world, things change a little bit at 400 Celsius and new challenges arise. Tuning the part is the real art. There are hundreds of settings that can be combined in different ways to achieve an optimized part. Now each part may have trouble spots that require different techniques to print successfully. The art of choosing hundreds of settings and making them work together to create a successfully printed part is the process. Often you'll tune a part, print it, see what needs to be tweaked, and then print again. This can take anywhere from one to ten attempts, uh, depending on the complexity. Lastly, mindset. So we're still really in the wild west of this industry. Hobbyists can print anything they find online, make cool objects or customize accessories, whereas functional printing is more about creating new, innovative solutions for old problems. Re-engineering the way parts are made to be more efficient. Solving once impossible problems. It, it, it's a whole new world, and the world of manufacturing is changing rapidly. If you're interested in stepping into the next level of additive manufacturing, give us a call or shoot us an email. We're happy to help and we love talking to people who have just crazy new ideas. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit subscribe, the notification bell, or, and leave a comment below with your suggestions for new videos or topics you'd like us to cover, any questions you may have. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a positive day, and we'll see you on the next video.